Greetings, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Top 10 Songs. I am Pete Pardo, host, CEO, and publisher of Sea of Tranquility, YouTube show here. We've got, uh, like I said, another edition of our Top 10 Song format. Today, we're going to take a look at my 10 favorite tracks, plus some honorable mentions, of San Francisco Bay Area Thrash Legends Metallica. So, you know, we know Metallica have taken a lot of slack in recent years, recent years being, like, say, the last, like, 15 or 20 or so, from kind of getting away from their classic sound. They had four kick-ass albums to start off their career, then had a mega-selling album in the Black Album, which uh, at the time was really, really popular with myself as well. But a lot of, like, hardcore fans going back and look at that as kind of the beginning of a trajectory that kind of took them away from their classic sound, uh, in which they've tried to recapture in recent years on the last couple of albums, right? But a lot of those classic thrash bands have continued to really thrive in recent years, and Metallica have been trying to kind of do this whole catch-up thing. But there's no mistaking the kind of relevance or kind of awesomeness of like their first four albums for me especially uh i cut my teeth on those early metallic albums and i gotta say metallica were probably like my favorite band for like a five-year period uh in the mid to late 80s where for me they could do no wrong and i was totally into anything they were doing so a lot of my, if not not a lot, all of my favorite 10 tracks are going to come from those first four albums, all right? So be interesting to see kind of how it unfolds here. And again, if you don't agree with my choices, that's okay. We each have our own set of ears. We all like what we like. Be interested to see your favorite 10 Metallica songs in the comments and feedback below. But remember, nobody's wrong here. It's all based on what you like. So if you like some of the newer material, that's great. If you like some different tunes from their older albums, that's cool too, right? Be interested to see. So let's kick off my top 10, shall we? Coming in at number 10 off the Master of Puppets album, Welcome Home Sanitarium. A really cool kind of thrashy anthem and one of those songs that if you went to see Metallica live back in the 80s, which I had the pleasure of doing many, many times, you always look forward to them playing that song. That song just really got everybody into it and singing along and what have you. Just a kind of really good, moody metal number that I always really dug a lot. Coming in at number nine, a raging, rip-snorting starter to the Ride the Lightning album, the Fast and Furious Fight Fire with Fire, which I was really dug. And, quite, and to be honest with you, that was probably the second song I ever heard from this band. And I can still remember the day. You know, I had kind of, uh, the Ride the Lightning album came out and I had heard a lot of people talking about Metallica, but I never really listened to the album, or I may have heard a little bit here and there, but it didn't really do a hell of a lot for me. And then one day, and I believe this was in it was either really late 84, really early 85, probably early 85. Uh, I had uh, was home from college on a little bit of a break, and I heard about this heavy metal record shop in Warwick, New York, called Rock and Roll Heaven North, okay, which was owned by a couple people who were associated with Megaforce Records. And I went there with a couple buddies of mine on a Saturday. Like I said, I was home from school for a weekend and walked in. And they were playing this like amazing music that was so heavy, so fast, so furious. And I was like, what in the world is this? And the guy was like, that's a new Metallica album. That's Ride the Lightning. And I was like, holy crap. So I kind of like stayed to hear the whole album and I loved it. And of course, I bought it on the spot. And then I just completely fell in love with the band and I bought... Um, kill them all shortly thereafter and then there was no stopping me then so uh, but fight fire with fire is always one of my favorite tunes off that album so that comes in at number nine coming in at number eight i'm gonna go back to kill them all i love the four horsemen great tune and you know a lot of those kill them all songs were co-written by dave mustaine who obviously was kicked out of the band prior to recording the album and, uh, but a lot of those riffs and a lot of those solos basically were created by him. And I think that, uh, for my money, Kirk Hammett's best lead work on any Metallica album is on Kill 'Em All. I just think that he's like off the chain, all over the place, extended, flashy, quick, speedy solos, using the wah wah when necessary. But I just think that his most kind of like dynamic soloing, uh, is on that album, although he had some really good leads on the next couple of albums. I think he's got kind of his uh, his lead work in like the last like twenty years to me just has, seems very safe, and he just uh, you know 
very in the pocket. He doesn't really take a lot of chances, but on those early albums, specifically the Kill 'Em All album, he really breaks loose quite a bit. And I, I always thought he was a pretty good lead player in those early days. Not that he isn't a good guitar player, but I think that his most inspired playing comes on those early albums. So the Four Horsemen, great, great kick-ass tune, coming in at number eight. Coming in at number seven, the title track to Ride the Lightning. Great epic thrash storytelling there. Killer riffs. Uh, James's gruff vocals, just uh, well, you know, you got Cliff on the bass, and just a really, really good tune that just makes so much sense. It's so well crafted, uh, a classic thrash tune right there. Coming to number six, sticking on title tracks. Why don't we? How about the title track to Master of Puppets? Master, Master, where's the sin that I've been after? Again, another tune that when that Master of Puppets album came out, <laughs> I was just blown away. I can recall listening to like nothing else for weeks on end when I got a hold of that Master of Puppets LP. Just one great tune after another. The whole album is great. I mean, you know, this my top ten list, if you were to ask me like a month from now, could easily change as I've been putting this together for the last day or so. A lot of these are like really my favorite songs, and but it's not that I don't like any of the others because I really do. Those first four albums are just top to bottom, pretty, you know, hard to match. So, Master of Puppets, another epic tune. These guys were doing so many epic tunes right around this time. Comes in at number six, number five from Ad Justice for All, which might be my favorite Metallica album, uh, Harvester of Sorrows. How heavy, you know, you can say what you want about the production. And that Lars's drums sound like shit, and you can hear Jason Newstead's bass. I get all that. But man, those guitars are so heavy on that album. The riffs are so massive. The tunes are epic. Just absolutely love it. And Harvester of Sorrows is just a brutally heavy track. I love and always have loved the real doomy vibe to a lot of tunes. It's like this kind of doomy prog metal -y vibe on the And Justice for All album that I really, really like a lot. And that continues on to my next pick, which is the title track, And Justice for All. What is that, 10, 11 minutes long, mammoth tune, cranking riffs from Hetfield and, and uh, Hammett. Uh, just a great, great Leviathan-like track that I always dug quite a bit. I just love that whole album. Coming in at number three, got to have some Creepin' Death, right, from Ride of the Lightning? Creepin' Death, that's a classic, a classic thrash tune. Uh, double bass drumming and rapid fire riffing doesn't get much better than that, folks. So that's number three. So coming in, my top two, my top two are almost they're they're kind of similar in a weird way to me anyway because they both do that whole like kind of like mellow intro and that's the sledgehammer riffing and the tasty soloing, but this sense of drama that is just kind of unrivaled. And I think both of these tunes, while on each album, might be the more mellower track from the album. It doesn't really matter because they're both so damn powerful. Number two from Injustice for All is One. I absolutely adore One. You know, for, uh, yeah, they had an MTV video that was a big hit and whatever, and a lot of people know the song. It's still a mean, menacing track with some fantastic riffing, and I love the whole creepy vibe that kind of builds up to the heavy sections and the crazy solo from Hammett. I just, you know, did -da 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 -da, like militaristic drums and guitar riffs. It's just awesome. I love one. And, you know, in any, on any other list or with anybody else, if it wasn't for my number one song, one would have been number one. But in this case, my number one has always been my favorite Metallica song. And going back to a story I told a couple minutes ago was the first Metallica song that really grabbed me. That day that I walked into Rock and Roll Heaven North in Warwick, New York, what was playing? Fade to Black by Ride the Lightning. Because what I heard when I was walking in were those kind of cool, you know, like acoustic chords and then a I remember walking in and I was like, this is glorious. What is this, right? So Fade to Black has always done it for me. I just, I love the whole pacing of the song. I love the kind of light and shade and the, the guitar solo is awesome. The riffs are great. Love everything about it. Always have the vocals are great. They're mellow and need be and then gruffing in your face towards the end. Just great, great stuff. My favorite Metallica song. Honorable mentions, why don't we? 
So let's go back to Kill 'Em All. Uh, I love Hit the Lights. Hit the Lights is kind of like a great Fast and Furious thrash tune with one of my favorite Kirk Hammett solos. I love the way he just kind of blisters and goes off and off and off in there. It's awesome. Uh, Jump in the Fire was in my original top ten. That's a very cool song. I always liked that a lot. It's the first Metallica song I ever like, uh, learned to play on guitar. And uh, it's just a really kind of fun, up-tempo track. Uh, Whiplash. Full speed ahead, speed metal, all right? Uh, no Remorse is a great tune. And, of course, you know, Seek and Destroy. you got to have Seek and Destroy on this list somewhere, right? Uh, from Ride the Lightning, For Whom the Bell Tolls. Great, heavy tune. Trapped Under Ice, nice raging, raging thrasher. And how about the instrumental Call of Cthulhu? These guys did some really cool instrumental tunes that were very, very proggy. Uh, from Master of Puppets, uh, of course, Battery, right? Another great thrash tune. The Thing That Should Not Be. Disposable Heroes, some great heavy tunes on this album. Leper Messiah, Leper Messiah sits right on the periphery. I love that tune. Uh, Orion, another great, great instrumental with some fantastic lead bass playing from Cliff Burton. And, of course, Damage Incorporated, right? That's the whole album right there, basically. Uh, and Justice for All, how about Battery? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting my songs. Not Battery. Ugh. I got them out of order here. Jesus, now I can't even remember which album they came out. All right, anyway, Battery's got a... I'm totally drawing a blank on which album Battery is from. Okay, but Battery's on that. I don't know why I have it twice. I probably... You know, I don't know what happened to you when I was typing away. Anyway, uh, also from Injustice for All, Eye of the Beholder, Short as Straw, and To Live is to Die, another great epic tune. Uh, from the Black Album. You know, the Black Album with me hasn't quite sat as well over the years. Uh, I liked it a lot when it first came out. I got really tired of it within like two or three years after it came out. And I really haven't revisited it a lot in recent years. Uh, but I, I do appreciate Wherever I May Roam, probably my favorite tune on that album. Uh, Sad But True is great. And Of Wolf and Man. All right. From Death Magnetic. So I'm going to skip a bunch of those like 90s albums. So the Load albums and, you know, Forget it. No interest in those whatsoever. But Death Magnetic and Hardwired to Self-Destruct actually are see the band returning a little bit to their kind of classic sound. I like some tunes from that. So from Death Magnetic, That Was Just Your Life is great, I think. Uh, the End of the Line is very cool. Broken Beat and Scarred, I like. And uh, Cyanide, some pretty strong tunes there. From Hardwired to, uh, to Self-Destruct, how about the Hardwired? All right. Atlas Rise, probably my favorite song on that album. And that's a really great tune. I think that's the best song the band have done since the uh, Injustice for All era. And Moth into Flame is a pretty cool tune. So let's run down my top 10 once again. Uh, Fade to Black comes in at number one. One comes in at number two. <laughs> that sounds kind of weird. Uh, Creeping Death comes in at number three. Number four, And Justice for All. Number five, Harvester of Sorrows. Number six, Master of Puppets. Number seven, Ride the Lightning. Number eight, The Four Horsemen. Number nine, Fight Fire with Fire. And number ten, Welcome Home Sanitarium. There you have my top ten songs from Metallica. Remember, if you like other stuff, that's great. We all have different likes and dislikes, so let us know what your top ten Metallica tracks are below. Nobody's right, nobody's wrong. And uh, this is on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're on the mighty YouTube. If you haven't seen, on our Facebook page, we've got some uh, rock female vocalist battles that have been going on for the last couple days. That's going to continue throughout the week. So make sure you check that out. And we've got some cool stuff starting next week. So uh, we look to see you there. As far as what's coming on this show, all sorts of great stuff. I have another uh, Forgotten Favorites some cool things I picked up in recent weeks, some really like undiscovered gems and uh, things from the underground from 70s prog, hard rock, and metal. So be sure to check that out. Um, we got some more top 10 songs shows coming up, as well as all sorts of stuff. I got a questions and answer show I'm going to be doing sometime this week, and you know, lots more to come. So stay tuned. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.